This is Matthias Knapp. Thanks for joining me on this Opalesque virtual investor visit, where we'll travel to Zurich to visit Icon Asset Management and take a look at their Icon Mosaic Comica market neutral strategy, an all weather absolute return strategy which has clocked a double digit average yearly return since inception in 2014 with no negative year. In this video you will learn first what ingredients Mosaic uses to create an all-weather strategy, two, why the theories and academic framework that most multi-billion asset managers and hedge funds rely on to manage their portfolio cannot generate above average returns nor consistently beat their passive benchmark, three, the deeply rooted misconceptions and erroneous practices around hedging in the asset management industry, and for a new approach and a new way to look at risk management. Icon's office is at Stockerstrasse 46, 8 minutes by tram or 15 walking from the Zurich main station. Let me take you up to the fourth floor now and meet Richard and Elias. Welcome to Opalesk Virtual Investor Visit. Today I'm in Zurich in the office of Icon Asset Management together with Richard Tulin, who is the CEO of Icon Asset Management, and Elias Nejashbi, he is the founder of Mosaic. Uh, today we will talk about Icon, but mostly about Mosaic's strategy. My background, I started as a proprietary global macro trader for Daiwa Securities in Frankfurt in 1994. I worked for them for several years, then moved to a few uh, boutique uh, trading houses in Dublin, uh, also in Gibraltar offshore before we set up ICON here in 2006. So ICON is a Swiss platform that incubates and supports emerging managers with uh, very good strategies that are outperforming their peers. We specialize not only in the regulatory and compliance support, but also in fundraising and uh, uh, pairing family offices and Swiss investors uh, with these emerging managers. We also have a third partner, Carmica Partners in London, was added to our Mosaic Icon partnership in 2019 to help uh, make the strategy even more robust and, and better. So let's leave Zurich and take a quick trip to London so that Michael Cameron and Martin Vestergaard from Carmica Partners can also introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Michael Cameron, partner and head of investor relations at Carmica Partners. We are a London-based hedge fund manager and we met Mosaic Partners over a year and a half ago and have been providing the permanent hedge to their strategies. Prior to Carmica Partners, I spent the bulk of my career working at bulge bracket banks like Deutsche Bank and Bank of America in equity derivative sales and trading. I'd been speaking to asset allocators, helping to educate them on the merits of having equity derivative exposures in a portfolio. I'm uh, Martin uh, Vestergaard. I'm the uh, founder and uh, portfolio manager at uh, Carmica Partners. We are a London-based firm uh, that focuses on, on option trading in, in SPX options. I have about 20 years experience in the, uh, in the financial markets, all in options. Started in 99 on the floor of the SIBO, working for a company back then called Arbitrate, where I ran risk for a uh, DPM on the floor. Then a few years later, I moved on to uh, all trading, which at the time had been acquired by Goldman Sachs. That's where I first time met my other partner in the business, Mandeep Modan. My job there was to be a, uh, an option market maker, but with heavy focus on financial engineering and, and, and quantitative analysis. I then left them in, in 2002 to go on the buy side started working for a fund called Horizon Asset Limited. They were primarily a credit and convert focused fund and they needed somebody to establish an option trading business and, and that was my job there. Left them in 2005 to go to Centaurus Capital, which was a 
uh, event-driven hedge fund, and they needed a risk manager. So the role there was really to try and establish a, a, a risk management approach, but again, based on the expertise of my, you know, my option knowledge, and, and trying to use option to reduce the portfolio risk. I left them in, 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 at the end of 2008 to go and work at a company called ADG, and that's where I met my partner again, uh, Majid Mudan. He was running a uh, volatility arbitrage, uh, arbitrage disk there. I joined him, and we started doing volatility uh, arbitrage on interest rates, commodities, and, and index options. I left them in 2012, and then in 2015, I started Kamika Partners and eventually got Majid convinced to come and join me. And uh, we now basically run a, uh, an option strategy that focuses on SPX options, extracting value out where we see cheapness and where we see you know, options are too expensive. We do that in terms of creating a portfolio that gives you downside protection and in otherwise rising markets creates a lot of alpha. Currently, we are working together with a Mosaic out of Switzerland. And we are offering our product in combination with the Mosaic product. And one of the reasons for doing that is after extensive analysis, we discovered that the two products combined gives a quite significant enhanced risk reward profile, resulting in a, in a significant higher shock ratio. I am Elias Nesherby, Mosaic founder and strategy developer. I'm a CFA charter holder. I hold an MBA from NYU Stern, LSE, and HSC Paris. I have spent most of my career at the crossroad of finance and technology, first in consulting, then in financial software industry, mostly at Fortune 500 companies. Now let's talk about the genesis of the strategy. It comes from my own professional experience. I have spent more than 20 years developing financial softwares, portfolio management, risk management, and trading tools for large asset managers with more than 100 billion of assets under management. I developed the first Mosaic model in 2006 with behavioral finance as core paradigm, using AI, so neural nets, genetic algorithm, to get to optimal results more efficiently. At the time, these tools were not as widely spread and as easy to use and to implement as it is today. This led the groundwork for the future development of the strategy. At the time, the strategy was long only and was already able to beat the S&P 70% of the time by 5 to 10% annually. However, even with a very robust, long-only strategy, one cannot generate positive return in a financial crisis like 2008. So it was obvious to me from the start that in order to turn my strategy into an all-weather, absolute return strategy, I needed to add additional engine to it, engines that would take over the long only engine during crisis and generate the returns. So I worked on the hedge engine and it was extremely complex as you have the S&P total return that returns 11% on average per year. So you have the underlying long-term market trend against you. I finalized the hedge engine in 2015 along with the volatility long short engine, which was a natural extension of the long only, applying the same approach but using volatility of volatility instead of stocks idiosyncratic volatility. There was also an academic background to the project as it became my MBA term project, MBA that I presented with my MBA team in New York in 2011. The objective and our objective at, at the beginning was clear, generate double digit average yearly return with no negative year. These objectives have been met since we launched our strategy live in 2000, 
2014 every single year. Our strategies have evolved, but our initial objective has, has remained the same. So Elias, your returns are quite different uh, from your peers or even the industry, the asset management industry as a whole. So for instance, when I look at your numbers in 2018, you were up double digit when the market was down for the year and many strategies had losses. But that was not really because you always have a short bias because in 2019, for example, you had another really good year when the S&P 500 total return was up more than 30% and you were able to beat that, outperform the S&P 500 total, total return again. So tell us, how do you do that? As I mentioned in the Corona Fighter video, if you think about it, the HFX Global has generated less than 1% yearly return in the last 10 to 15 years. So if we want to continue to deliver our objective of double digit average yearly return, we have to do things differently and be very innovative in our investment strategies. If we do the same as everyone else, we will have the same results as everyone else, we will have the HFRX Global Returns. First, in terms of research papers, we read a lot of research in fields that are outside of finance. Anthropology, biomedicine, AI, physics. And sometimes we find interesting ideas that might have application in our systematic investment field. We then adapt these ideas and incorporate them in our own proprietary framework. We also read finance research papers, but we always take these papers with a grain of salt because we have learned along the years that there are a lot of misinterpretation rooted in asset management practices that might sometimes leads to costly mistakes and underperformance. Sometimes investors ask me about how we deal with sector diversification, portfolio concentration, or tracking error versus the benchmark. Given that we use only price data as input, which are sector agnostic, and we hold no more than 20 positions in our portfolio. These questions are only relevant for portfolio managers who want to be closet indexers. They are totally irrelevant if the objective is to crush the benchmark. We design our strategy in a two-step process. First, we design each performance engine independently of each order. Each performance engine has to do well on its own merit and has to work in a marked environment that is orthogonal to the other engines. Then, in the second step, we assemble the engines. The global strategy allocates to the engines using the AI platform that we have developed in MATLAB with the objective of optimizing a performance metric that we specify while minimizing a risk metric that we define at the onset. This way, at each step of the process, the features that are selected are features that maximize performance while minimizing risk. What is important for us as well is to be able to take advantage of market structural inefficiencies, which relying on behavior of finance as paradigm allow us to achieve, as well as avoiding misinterpretations and erroneous practice in our design process. Hence, sometimes we have to come up with our own definition that are different from the industry definitions. For example, what we call market neutral is very different from what the industry calls market neutral. The way we look at correlation and how we measure it is different from 
the way the industry defines it and looks at it. The way we manage our hedges is also different. And finally, our use of AI is not the way the industry uses AI. We use AI to find relationships that stand over time. We use AI to optimize the value of our parameters and we use AI to allocate to sub-strategies. But we do not use AI to directly take investment decisions. We think that if we follow scientifically based robust process to design our strategy similar to what industries that develop life critical systems do, we will have the same level of integrity and robustness as in these life critical industries. So you talked about some common misinterpretations in our space and also that within Mosaic you define certain industry terms differently. Tell us more about those. How do hedges work? Investors usually look at hedges as immediate protection against short-term market drawdowns. Thus, the focus on daily correlation. However, there are two other ways hedges work, which are very often ignored by investors. First, there is the volatility reduction and compounding effect. It can be proven mathematically using Lagrange optimization under constraint that if the sum of your monthly return is fixed, then the maximum yearly return that one can obtain is by having all monthly returns identical. So through that mechanism, a hedge that has zero return or even a slightly negative return can improve cumulative performance. Then the second aspect is the pertinent correlation measure. The pertinent correlation measure is the correlation that is measured at the rebalancing frequency, not necessarily at the daily frequency. Using pertinent correlation measure, even a hedge with a significantly negative standalone performance can improve return because rebalancing occurs when it's optimal. A good example of this is the period between August 2007 and August 2009, where hedging a long S&P 500 portfolio with a VIX future front month long rolled every month leads to 50% more losses despite the negative daily correlation between the S&P 500 and the VIX future front month during the period. Because if no rebalancing occurs, then the daily correlation does not matter. What matters is the correlation measured at the end of the period, which in this case is plus one. Contrasting with what happened if for the same portfolio, the rebalancing is daily. In this case, the S&P 500 standalone performance is slightly improved by this hedge despite this hedge losing close to 16% on a standalone basis over the period. So what we can see here is what really makes a difference is not so much the standalone performance of the hedge as it is the matching between the rebalancing frequency and the negative correlation measure. When the two matches, then it's likely that the hedge is going to improve performance. But when there is a mismatch between the rebalancing frequency and the 
measure of the negative correlation, then the hedge is likely to cause more losses. So this is very important and very often overlooked. And that's what our AI platform does naturally when it's allocated to sub strategies because it does a mathematical optimization under constraint, it will automatically fit the correlation measure to the rebalancing frequency, which by the way, more often than not, is not fixed and obey to the logic and algorithm of each strategy. So Elias, I wonder, what is your approach overall to risk management? Mathematical expectation is a concept widely used in finance and risk management. However, in many cases, it doesn't apply. Let's take the example of a game, coin toss, where each better initially bets $100 and then tosses a coin several times. Heads win 50% and tails lose 40%. So the mathematical expectation is plus 5% per toss. However, this mathematical expectation is not indicative of each better expectation in the game. While the minus 5% mathematical expectation is indicative of the organizer expectation in the game. In other words, the organizer expectation in the game is not the opposite of each better expectation. More interestingly, each better goes bankrupt in this game and the game organizer as well, which is something that is difficult to reconcile. The reason for this is what Dr. Ole Peters calls ergodicity. Collectively, the better earn 5% per toss, but individually each better goes bankrupt over time. The time average is not equal to the ensemble average or the mathematical expectation, and then the process is said to be non-ergodic. The dynamic of the game is as follows. As time passes, each for most betters, go bankrupt, but a tiny minority becomes immensely rich, so much so that this tiny minority gigantic gains make up for the majority losses and maintain the average at 5%. Interestingly, there is a way to bet that switches the game to winning game for each better. And that's by betting only 50% of the available cash. And there is also a way to maximize cumulative returns. And that's by betting 25% of the available cash. So that's very interesting from a risk management perspective in that it tells us that a trade with a 5% expected return can be maximized in terms of cumulative return, not by leveraging it, but instead by deleveraging it. So finally, please tell us, what are your objectives going forward? Currently, our investment strategies are available through actively managed certificates and managed accounts. We want to offer to our investors a fund vehicle very quickly. We are also working on an ESG strategy using the same underlying engines as today, but applying an ESG filter to our investment universe. In terms of AUM growth, our objective is to reach 1 billion of AUM within 3 to 5 years.